Hey guys, this is Chris McDonald, and uh, a number of you asked uh, about setting up um, race result and race day scoring or uh, race director. And so I wanted to do a really quick tutorial. Um, in case you haven't used it before, there is a questions tab. Um, there's only a handful of people on, that's what I was expecting. Um, we are recording this, so um, people can review it later, or if I need to re-record it to uh, to answer more questions, I can do that as well. But um, feel free to ask questions. I'm going to go through um, a couple of really quick setups. Um, I might actually jump straight in. Uh, we are currently timing the Richmond Marathon, and so um, with race result on site. So. Um, the first thing um, you want to do, and I, I'm going to make the assumption that you've already come in to and, and created your race on uh, race day scoring. Um, if you want to do this on race director, I can do that. I can switch over to that um, in a bit. But first, I'm going to go through race day scoring. So um, you want to go ahead and import race already owner and sign up if it is, or you can create a new race. I've already created some. And so I'm just going to dig straight into an event that's already there. Um, so again, this is a live event, I'll pause it for the moment, um, but uh, what you end up doing, again, this is not how to set up race day scoring altogether, this is quite literally how to connect the two. So we're going to be living in these two buttons right here, the streams and timing locations, and then we're going to play with this reads button. So um, in the streams button for race result, um, the way I have it set up is I have, I, I like to uh, TCP connect to my decoders. Um, and so if I go into, I'll just go ahead and go into uh, the Richmond Marathon. And again, this is with the assumption that you have some basic knowledge of race result 12. Um, so you can set everything up. Again, I'm just using race result 12 as an exporter. So um, I'm going to go into my timing location. And you can see I just changed the battery in one of these, which is why it's red. So sorry for that. Um, but you can see a number of devices, and I have currently have it set to um, to keep act active after closing the browser. So um, I have in exporters and tracking. Again, I'm just going to go through this very quickly because I assume that a lot of you guys have uh, have played in here before. And that is, um, so these two were just test units, but we set up um, an, a file exporter for each one of my timing locations. It's just personally how, how I like to do things. I always feel like it's good to have a saved file on my local device so I can go back and review later. Um, and so I also have a direct connect for all timing points. So if I go into timing points, you can see I have a start finish, 8K turnaround, half, full marathon turnaround and a road crossing as locations. So I've got each one of those listed as, um, as locations here. And then my direct connect is um, all timing points. I'll make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. So I have direct all timing points. Um, personally, I use a, a custom file to export, um, but you can easily choose um, one of your, uh, I think, I think the, uh, suggested way of doing is going to like the run score and then going back to custom um, or the uh, the raw time data. But I have a custom one. I'll gladly um, I'll gladly send that out. I'm not holding that back at all. Um, but then we have a TCP IP connection here and um, we're communicating with lo local host on uh, listen port uh, 3601. So how do I know that information if you ever forget? So when you're in race day scoring, um, you can go into your streams and under your basic settings here at the top is your global settings. You can go in and you can see your chip system or race result and it, it, um, auto, it defaults to 3601 and your listen address as localhost. So um, you do want to make sure, step one, under streams, that you're setting up your stream type correctly. So if you have multiple systems, like say you have IPCO or MyLabs or something like that as well, 
Um, you will need to make sure you change these settings uh, depending on what uh, decoder you're setting up and what um, kind of race you're using. So, um, so then if you're starting from the beginning and you have no assigned streams, you're just going to click add a stream. And from here, again, my personal way of doing things, and I'm going to cancel it and go into one. So this is a decoder. I'm going to edit this, and you can see the stream name. I set it to the decoder name, so D-55182 um, hyphen direct. And the description, I do something you know super simple. And then under stream types, you have multiple types you could choose. And so race result and file are what I use specifically. So if you choose race result direct, an additional field pops up and it even says, this must be an exact match to a race result source name in your middleware. So D55182, if I go into my systems here, I can see D55182, right? So that means that that is going to connect this specific stream is going to connect to that uh decoder now you might not have any timing locations listed for this yet but if you scroll down more you can see that my listen address is localhost and my listen port is 3601 um and if you do use gunshot on um your device um you can set this to whatever you want um, you can also set it to um, retain duplicate reads. And in the stream, if you want to, I would say if you're starting out and you've never used this before, I would not put in any filters, but you can change all reads to a specific date or set another range for a specific device. Again, it's not something that I use very frequently. Um, you might have a, a case that you do need to do that. Um, but again, this is your direct connect. It's super simple. Decoder ID hyphen direct. You don't have to put in a description. You choose race result direct and you put in your source name of your decoder ID. So, and then you hit save. I'm just gonna hit cancel since it's already saved. And so now we have it in there. And we're just gonna assume that I've done this multiple times. These T218, uh, uh, that is a passive track box. So it's the exact same thing with your passive track boxes. You name it what it would show up in here. So if I go down, I can see I have a passive track box right here, T218 or whatever, 20,018. Um, same thing, same listen address, all stays the same. You're just gonna name it. Your source name is based off of your device name. So again, we're saving all of those and this is what it looks like, a bunch of red dots. So red is bad, right? We, uh, we don't want it to be red. So quite literally, all we need to do is we just need to go in and turn on. First, we're gonna go into reads here and start the connector. So we've started the connector and all of these will likely stay red because I've not gone in and it should give me a bunch of, uh... yep disconnected and connected. So all I need to do now is I need to go into my, and I'll actually do this in my, um, if I go into my local device, so all I would do is hit play on my direct connect. And so at that point, data begins, this will all go away in a split second. It'll all start filtering in. And so I already have data coming in from the decoders. So if you're using a file, the key to remember is if you, um, so again, like I am, let's see, I am saving these files. I just have, I make file folders for each event. And again, this is a weird event, but it is live data right now. So it's a, a great example. Um, so I do dump all of these into a file. Um, personally, if you're going to time off a fa file versus TCP IP, I would have these in separate folders. And again, I'm going to make some assumptions that you guys have worked with exporters. If not, you're gonna come in here and you're gonna change your exporter location. So you would just have an additional file um, in this, you would have another, uh, another level in your, um, 
your file saving address. So, and then if you're saving to file, you would just have, um, you would go into your streams. Again, all these are green now, so they're connected, but you can have any of these based off of file. So 55162 is a file and 55162 direct is a direct. So the difference in between these two, you can see this is set to race result direct. This is set to file. And so when you set it to 55162, 55162, and, and maybe I change the stream name to file, even though it says what type in there. So you can say stream type, race result file, file type, race result file, and you put your folder path. So the last time I used the file save was actually at our uh, at our symposium um, in January, just to show how frequently I had time with files. But you would just quite literally say, all right, I'm gonna browse and this open on a different screen, but it brings up where you want to look. So you would quite literally, you could say browse this document. Now, if I do this and just browse under this 2020 RICMAR, what that's gonna do is it's gonna look at all of these files. So again, what I would wanna do is I would ha wanna have a new file, uh, new file folder, and I would want this dumping in, like if it's a, let's say we're looking at the 8K, we would want this 8K in a, a folder called 8K. And that way it's, because um, what it's doing is uh, race result or, or uh, race day scoring is going to look for any changes in that file folder. So if you, again, if you point at this, it's going to be looking for any file updates. Um, and then it will then use the the um, anything in there to update. So as you can see, if you wanna assign these to a stream, I usually don't do that in here or it, assign the stream to a timing location just for ease of, I don't know, for, for ease of thought, I go to my timing locations and from there I set my two decoders are my start finish. So um, that is how you set this up. And I know I, I went through that fairly quickly, but it is fairly a fairly simple process. Um, and again, before I move on, I wanna see if anybody's got any questions. Because I can go through that whole process again. And so while I'm on this, I can quite literally come in. And again, this is this is a live event. We're collecting reads. We we are in, and we are looking at. I've got reads ten minutes ago, um, and they hit the last one. They hit a road crossing split thirty seven seconds ago. So if I go back into my chip reads, that road crossing is four four two four zero. So again, I do know that the 4.2 is uh, a half marathoner. So 4.240 right here. And I'm, uh, I'm Eastern time. So this corresponds with a read that we would have received just a bit ago. Um, oh, nope, I'm pointing the wrong one. I apologize. Where's the half 3.8? Full 3.8, half 3.8, there we go, 4240, 1513. So that would have been right about a minute ago that he read. Um, so not seeing any questions, which I hope that means that the explanation makes sense. Um, I'm still waiting. And and just in case, we do have uh, Bryce on from Race Result, and I can, uh, I don't know if he needs to add anything on the exporter setup, since obviously this is very specific to uh, Race Result. Um, but Bryce, if you want to add anything, just shoot a question in and I'll, I'll add you in so you can, uh, you can comment as well uh, verbally. 
Um, okay, awesome. So Bryce says I didn't I didn't fail. I did a good job of explaining. <laughs> so that's positive. Um, so the funny thing is on race director, it's quite literally the same process. Um, you're going to connect via TCP IP and that direct connect is the same way you're, you're using this direct connect right here, um, which is under your, uh, your exporters. So, um, I mean, race result 12 is, is awesome, uh, for timing and for scoring, um, in terms of if you're wanting some of those live integrations that run sign up has, um, you know, race day scoring is a great alternative and these exporters are, um, are very stable. Um, I know that every once in a while we, we drop, um, the, um, oh, what's it called? The, uh, local adapter. Um, but I think I just for perspective, I've been timing this event for the past 11 days and I think we've had, uh, local adapter drop once. So um, it's really, it does not happen very frequently. Um, so let's see, anybody else have any questions? Billy, Dave, Giannis, you guys, uh, you have any questions on, on that and the setup? What I can do, this might be helpful. I have a bunch of extra stuff in here. We do a lot of active timing. Um, I think I can send out. Yeah, um, I'm gonna send out, I think this is gonna go. I apologize if this doesn't go, this should go to everybody. Um, if you wanna copy and paste that into like, a, so I just sent out a chat to everyone with what my, um, my export, my custom export data is, you do not have to use that by any stretch. Um, so, so, and Bryce, actually we restarted a couple of times. Um, we, I think there was something going on a little bit earlier, but it has been resolved and all is well. So um, can anybody tell me if they did receive that chat? Just a yes or no. Um, Cause I don't want to leave you guys with a, Yes. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Um, yep. Yeah, I will now open up a uh, race director and do the same thing. So I'm going to leave this running because um, I am still timing that event. So give me one second. Just pulling up race director. So here is race director. So again, I have no idea what file I used last on this because I guess the good news is I've been um, time with race day scoring so much. So um, we'll go with any event. I don't think it matters. And so um, let's see. So we've got in here our options and under our, let's see how we have this set up for this event. Single segment, our timing location set to a start finish, our gun time. Um, so gap factor here is four minutes and 30 seconds. And hopefully everybody knows now what gap factors are. Um, and so, but actually, let's see, hold on one more second. So, and give me one sec. The, I'm reading some of these questions. Uh, haven't jumped over to, real quick before we get too deep into race day scoring, Johannes, are you, uh, are you wanting to see the incoming data for in, in what platform? Just so I don't get too deep into race day scoring. Both. Okay. Real quick, I'm going to go back to uh, race day scoring. And so if you want to see this, you just go in to the, on the homepage, you go into raw reads and you have it broken down in terms of uh, your raw reads coming in. Now, granted, 
this this has been running for days and days so i'm actually going to go to 473 and so we actually see that last read at 313 um that's bibs 424 read bibs 420 or 4240 and read chip is 4240 um and so you get a lot of other information here like for interest if for uh for instance you see John Metz has a, a better read selected um, for his uh, for his time at a specific location. So the reason why this happened is because this was a start time. So it's bringing in all the raw reads and this one was not used because he's still, per the gap factors, he's still at the starting line. And so it's still reading him. Um, in terms of 803, extra finish occurrence, um, the reason why that's saying it is because um, the person's already finished. So if I go back, see how it still has it again, and then this one was used. And if we look at the time, we see 259.73 uh, or 259.23 versus 259.25, which is why this one was used as the finish. And we can click into these people scroll down and see these raw reads and see the time of day that they read. And if you need, say you missed a read um, because the person like threw their bib away or something like that, all you would need to do on any one of these pages is go in here, you select your timing device that you're streaming from. And so you can add in The bib number, I usually leave the chip out. That way I can easily see any raw reads that I've added in. And normally you don't have to worry about setting the date. For my event, you would because people are running for multiple days. And so you just put the, the time and then hit submit reads. And about 30 seconds later, it takes to calculate it, filters them back in and bumps all of the, uh, if you have multiple reads at one location, it, um, it moves those reads around uh, as needed. So is that what you were looking for in this side, Johannes? Is that, just wanna make sure I'm showing you what you were uh, hoping to see. And then I'll jump over to race director. I think that should cover it. Oh, I will say that there's this cool thing up here, ambiguous times, especially for uh, gap factors. If you click on this, you can then see a breakdown of all of the possible gap factors that were uh, achieved for that person. So you can go review these as needed and um, say say Richard Lindsay um, actually, you know, he didn't run a 217, he ran 5640. So you can switch this over and it updates their, uh, it updates their results. So you get a list of all the, gap, all the possible gap factors by event and again i'm going to have a lot more because people are showing up multiple days and so i get a gap factor overnight and things like that so um this data set is a little bit um larger than you would normally have at a at a like a even an elongated start finish time um that uh, you know like two three four hours start finish time um you would have lots fewer uh, issues there, or, or not issues, but uh, options to choose from, just because people aren't gonna be hanging out and coming back day in and day out. Um, so, all right, we'll see if I, I can force this to go into today. Let's see, chip setup. We've got race result, calculate pace based on chip time. Um, I don't think I wanna push anything, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, and so I'm just checking all of these other things. And let's see, we can set up a, we'll just set this, we're gonna set a, uh, an additional timing location. So um, let's see. And then we're not doing any of that. So you quite literally in uh, in chip results, in a results chip results. So 
you can choose your timing location. It looks like I already have some. Um, so you can choose your timing location and your settings. Let's see, calculate after each cycle. And so um, I am going to go into import. And so once you click import, you can browse. And again, this is about to foul up all the results in here, but it was just a fun event anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and let's see, desktop and read files, and we'll just pull, I don't think it matters. We'll get a lot of unknown reads. Um, I might have to add a couple athletes in. Uh, let's see. So you can see the files in there. So, like I said, we'll just tell it to set up everybody. So three times assigned in there. So you can see how they have data in. So now it's already pointing at the right file. So you can quite literally hit auto import and it'll import all of your times at all of your locations. You would just go to each specific location to uh, to pull that in. So it's gonna it's gonna keep doing that for me. Um, and then my settings here, I might have, you know, include all timing locations, include start reads. Um, but, you know, I usually set this parameter to 30 seconds, um, maybe even 60 seconds. When I'm dealing with, you know, only a handful of people, it doesn't really matter on that auto uh, refresh. But if you're at a bigger event, it will it'll work long enough that you don't have a chance to to get in and fix things because when you're on auto import it um you while it's waiting and calculating you can't change anything else until you take it off of auto import and if you've got your um everything linked to run sign up you can also publish live results and you can pick your result settings like i usually check everything is preliminary um and then a lot of times I'll do a full refresh initially and then incremental refreshes after that. You can also choose to hide splits initially um, if you want to. It, again, it's completely up to you. So all of this is there um, and you're pointing at, um, at these locations. Um, and let's see, I'm trying to think if you're if you are wanting to live stream to run sign up you would quite literally go to Taylor Divisions and you would select here, edit, and you would click right here. And you see how you can already see the 400, 450 slash, whatever that number is. This is the uh, race ID, not the event ID, but the specific one mile race ID. And this is the result set number. So that's telling me that it is pointed at this event. So I believe I'm saying that right because if I go to the next one, it'll still have that 400, 450, but it'll have probably 938 uh, or 939 or something like that. So if I go to the 5K, oh, so I had that backwards. Oh, no, I didn't. Hey, Chris, that, yep. that, for, that first number is actually the event ID on run sign up. Not the event race. ID, okay. So, so it's, it's the, the event ID, and then you have the, uh, and you have the result set ID. So regardless, if you're seeing these numbers here, that means you are linked to your run sign up result set. And so you can set up your inner results, chip results. And you can set this to auto after import, or you can just click publish live results. Um, I don't want to send all these unknown participants up to run sign up right now because it is connected to a uh, result set, but that would uh actually i guess i really don't care and so um you can also click that button i don't know if you guys saw that but um this live results button takes you to the results and those were unknown participants so they uh they aren't going to show up because they're not linked to anyone but if we had people assigned here it would push up the beauty of race day scoring is you can uh you can change these people within race day scoring it'll update and push 
So um, you can auto update. Um, you can auto update uh, results and bib numbers and everything like that. And um, and uh, yeah, it'll push both ways. So are there are there any questions on the race uh, on the race director side? Let's see. So, the race director, you would use files. So that's normally how I do it, Billy. Um, Billy asked if uh, with race director you usually use files. Um, yeah, that again, like I'm not sure. Matt, did you? Matt Avery's on the call too, um, who is like a guru of race director and the product manager of race day scoring. Um, and his experience with race day, uh, race director, far exceeds mine. So. Um, he might have a different protocol for uh, for how he imported data into Race Director. I don't think one is necessarily uh, better than the other. Um, it's all getting kind of batched when you do the import, anyways. So the direct isn't any faster than a file unless you manage to catch yourself in between like output cycles from race result. So I don't really think uh, there's one that's like I said better than another. I like the files just because it's easy for me to troubleshoot and I can just go ahead and open up the file itself and look at it and see if it's looking all right. Um, with a direct, other things can go wrong, like we start dropping things or the connection drops, but a file is pretty straightforward. So I, I tend to prefer a file. Yeah. And again, like my my process is um, a file and race director, and um, I definitely use uh, TCP IP with race day scoring. Um, let's so. Okay, Billy. Sorry, I'm reading. Uh, I'm reading your. So I will say, Billy, um, on the exporter side of race result, and again, um, so the question is, um, the exporters aren't always working until I delete them and create them again during the race. Not sure if I can help with that, um, what, with what I'm actually seeing. So um, I kind of know what you're talking about. And so what I would say is um, if you start an event and you start changing this once you hit play on an exporter, so here if i go in and start changing any of these parameters like in my exporters but it's playing it will foul things up to the moon like you have to create a new thing so if you hit play and your destination is wrong in your exporter so like you whoops i screwed up where it's going or i forgot to put my txt at the end and so it's saving as just a blank file type or something like that or I've got the wrong exporter type and I got to change that, or I'm going to change any of this stuff. Um, so all of that is, uh, it will absolutely foul, foul up your um, your exporter and you will have to recreate it. Uh, you will have to make a new one. Um, so just keep that in mind. So let's see. Jonas, I'm not sure what the why not was for. What are the advantages of using race result with race director versus uh, race result only? So um, race result, um, if you're registering on run signup. So this was kind of a, a question that people were use, uh, were asking when um, when a lot of times people will have, especially in the US, uh, their registration on run signup. And so um, race director will pull down um, unidirectional, you pull down all your data and it's really convenient. So if you go in, give me a second, if you go in and um, and you can update your participants, so you can you can download, you can import all of your people from run sign up or a number of other places, right? So you hit import and it's in push mode, so it's not gonna wanna do it right now. 
Um, and everything comes down, but if anything changes, it's set. You have to change it and then push it back up. And sometimes those changes can create uh, multiple records in different places, depending on where you're sending it. Um, the difference is in race day scoring, again, especially when your registration is on run sign up. So like if I find a participant and I, I mean, I could change any one of these people and I, this is a real event, so I don't want to foul it up, but I could go in and I could change this person's bib number and it would update in run sign up. I could change this person's event and it would update at run sign up and vice versa with using the check-in app or um, any other type of, of uh, access into that run sign up data on the web, you can update it and it will sync into here. So if, um, if, you, if you end up needing to do an update, you can do it on either side. I've had people that, oh, we forgot to assign a bib number to that guy because he showed up late. We just gave him a bib number. We know he registered, we have no clue who he is. He finishes the races, high fives it. Somebody walked up to him and said, hey, what's your name? Oh, John Smith. They went in and checked in John Smith to number one, two, three, four, and all like no additional work had to be done. Everything uh, updated, and um, his results were visible online. So um, that's that's the benefit here. Um, and in case you guys don't know, this little tool about in progress is really really cool. So um, in the race day scoring, it's the little things that I love. So uh, yeah, Billy, I, I, I'm. You do like I, I'm not giving you a hard time. I'd be more than happy to walk you through it, um, especially if you're connected to your own decoders. Um, so, yeah, again, like you set up your streams. Each stream is a decoder name with either direct or file because they are two different types. And then your timing locations, you just go in. You can do this in streams. Again, personally, I like to know my full start and finish. These are the two streams. Don't put your second decoder in your backup stream. This is usually for your manual system that's backup. So um, you want both your streams in as main streams. Um, yeah, so I think that covers most everybody's questions. And again, if you have specific questions, feel free to reach out to me at Chris at Run Sign Up. I'd be more than happy to chat with you. Um, you know, Matt's always available too. Um, and if you ever have issues during a race, you can always click this button at the top right, this get, get help button. And if you click that and you put your name in and description of the issue and hit send, it sends a, it buttons up an error log or a, a whole backup of your uh, event. It doesn't send your raw reads, but it does send everything else. And so we have people uh, on the back end that, that can help review um, and troubleshoot. Um, so yeah again billy if, you, if you're interested i mean again just shoot me an email i'd be more than happy to uh to carve out some time and we could uh we could work on getting everything synced up because again this hardware and, and exporters are are very stable very good equipment and uh with the innovations that have been done on race day scoring um it's fantastic so it'll make your life, especially in the, the gap factor timing with a lot of different variables moving around, it'll make your life a lot easier. So with that being said, again, don't forget before you leave to copy that chat window information. Um, if you don't already have like an exporter that like export information that works well. But um, again, all of this is recorded and we can publish it later, I think. So yeah, I appreciate it guys. And I uh, hope you have a great rest of your week and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.